The government of Rwanda targets to increase the urbanization rate from about 18% to 35% by 2024 to support economic growth. The housing needs and demands will grow dramatically in the coming years. Welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. In this episode, we look at affordable housing and how modern technology can help to scale affordable houses in Rwanda. I'll be your host, Tessie Carvin. A housing market study done in the city of Kigali in 2018 showed that 700,000 new houses were needed by 2028, 70% of which lay in the affordable housing category. The majority of those in need of housing are in the low-income cadre, and some require special housing programs to be able to afford decent housing. To address this problem, the government of Rwanda has been proactive in promoting the housing sector in order to achieve inclusive urbanization. Like many countries uh, uh, in Africa or even beyond, Rwanda is uh, working to figure out the best way to deliver affordable housing for people that earn low incomes. And so today's project that we've launched, which is a partnership for affordable housing, is one example of how government, a government like Rwanda's government can partner with the private sector to deliver affordable housing. And so what we did with this company is uh, look at the whole process of getting a house at a certain price. So whether it's the land or cost of capital, all the things that are required for this project to become affordable, we worked with the company to make that possible. And the good thing with this company, they bring a very new type of technology that we don't have in the country, which is using light steel uh, frames to be able to deliver houses. And what we see with this uh, type of technology is um, it's more affordable, so it brings the cost of construction down, but it's also faster to deliver. Within three months, they can deliver a three-bedroom house, which is really a short period of time, and they can do this in big numbers as well. So today was a modeling uh, process to launch them. We want to scale that up and have thousands of houses possibly in this country. That's what we're going to be working hard towards. Delivering affordable houses for its people has been no mean feat for the Rwandan government. Various initiatives have been implored in order to ensure investments in the housing sector are bankable. These include incentives like tax holidays for construction companies, tax exemptions on construction materials, and provision of land for construction of houses. These initiatives caught the attention of one particular investor, Soleiman Eid. In 1979, I found the construction technology and affordable housing by accident in Italy. And I was involved all the time, and I felt. So when I decided to really invest in affordable and housing technology, and I tried first in Gabon, which I was well, well, well established. And uh, we miss it five things. We miss it, first of all, there was a gap with the government say and government did between the words and the deeds. We missing anyone who offer us a land. We miss it also government who is ready before we build the houses to make the infrastructure. And we have a problem of uh, titles. And when I discovered that Rwanda offers that from the day one, don't ask me why I'm here. Tell me when I'm going away. I will tell you never. With full support from the Rwandan government through a public-private partnership with the ADHI corporate group, the Bgeza Riverside Development Project commenced in 2021. The target is to build 2,280 units. Um, the Buiza Riverside Affordable Homes consist of 2,280 units that varies from two bedroom to four bedrooms. Now, um, in, in terms of the pricing, the entry level is actually 16.5 million uh, Rwandese francs and it rises to what we call a, a luxury homes, which is like the uh, four bedroom homes that actually will actually start from 85 million. Now, uh, between the 16.5 million and 85 million, 
we do not have really a single unit that has only one bedroom. All of them consist of two bedrooms and then it varies from the two bedrooms to the three bedrooms to the four bedrooms. And the reason why we actually sort of like did these model homes today is to sort of like reach out to the population of the Raj and gather their feedbacks on how we can actually improve these houses before we can start the 2,208 units. Because we don't want to sort of like just go ahead and build them without actually having that feedbacks on those for those actually destined to have those houses. Ranging from two to four bedrooms, the houses are neat and compact with great use of space and a modern feel. The four bedroom houses are however not under the affordable housing category as they are luxury homes priced at 85 million Rwandan francs. Studies have shown that most construction projects globally typically take 20% longer to finish than scheduled and are up to 80% over budget because of little adoption of modern technology. Um, we Africans, traditionally, we used to build our houses in muds and sticks. And what we are actually doing here is exactly the same. The mud has been replaced by the light concrete and the sticks has been replaced by light steel. So the concept itself is something that, hi, that is not actually new in the world, but we are actually bringing it to Rwanda, but we've actually adapted to the uh, environment and the uh, uh, African mentality, to say the least, because in North America, people are used to having dry walls, which means that when you knock on the walls, you can actually hear that sound. Whereas we, in this great continent that we live in, when we knock on the walls, we will have to hear a solid wall. So that's why we've actually replaced the uh, dry walls that they use in North America with light concrete and a steel mesh actually, but it actually retains everything. The, the uh, light concrete consists of uh, uh, sand, cement, and also something called uh, EPS, in, in, encapsulated air which means that uh, instead of using gravels, we are replacing the gravel with the uh, recyclable materials. That recyclable materials, it's, it's uh, what we call the basis of, of us actually providing homes which are sunproof, fireproof, and also can actually insulate the whole house. So that uh, on a very hot day in Africa, you can still go into have like that uh, ambient temperature inside it. Technology is revolutionizing the construction sector, helping to deliver both speed and precision. Um, technology is something extremely important when it comes to construction for two main reasons. Number one is speed, so time is money. Technology allows you to be able to deliver very many houses within within a, a short period of time. That's that, that's that's uh, number one. Number two is is precision and and, and efficiency. So. Um, if you have planned to use, for example, uh, 10 tons of steel on a project, you will use 10 tons of steel. Everything, if you, if you plan to use uh, a container of, of tiles, you'll use a container of tiles. So precision and, and time are the biggest friends of technology. Rather than the conventional brick and mortar, this technology makes use of light concrete and light steel frames, greatly reducing the total cost of houses and making them affordable. But one would ask, what really is the definition of affordable and how can low-income earners own these homes? The, the definition of uh, affordability in the Rwandan context is um, uh, people earning incomes, say, from $200 all the way to $1,200 as either single, single income or family income. Uh, typically, those have been very difficult to, to, it's been difficult for them to afford mortgages. Uh, recently, the government of Rwanda signed uh, a deal with, um, with uh, the World Bank and they came up with an affordable housing fund that then allows borrowers, mortgage borrowers, to, to access loans for, at interest rates, interest rates that are as low as 
for a payment period that can go up to 20 years. So that's how the low income earners uh, are able to access these mortgages. Apart from delivering affordable homes, the ADHI corporate group has established a training academy to teach light steel frame construction methods, especially to the Rwandan youth, not only to achieve posterity and further scalability, but also to reduce over-reliance on expatriates. We cannot afford to just bring in a uh, expatriate from abroad and expect to actually be competitive in, in terms of delivering affordable homes. So one of the things that we are doing is we are bringing the uh, expatriates, we have been training some of our workforce on this construction technology and then what we are doing is when we feel that the local workforce have reached the uh, certain skill set needed to actually uh, build these houses at a considerable uh, speed then we are slowly but surely reducing the uh, reliance of expatriates. Equipped with these skills, it is hoped that the youth will in turn create employment. This uh, training will make these people to know how to create jobs. This will bring them to know this technology, then they can extend it and train others so that our technology grows. It, it's really good to Rwandans, every Rwandans, the youth especially, to come to us, then we can train them about light steel technology, then they can create the, their own employment. We don't need to wait for uh, the, our government to give us work to give us jobs. We need to create it ourselves. With the high rate of urban population growth, delivering decent, good quality, affordable homes has been a hard nut to crack for many African governments. However, as we have seen, technology innovation holds promise for making housing and home ownership accessible to more people. That brings us to the end of this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Thank you for watching. Share your feedback with us on Twitter. Our handle is at CNBC Africa or tag me directly at Tessie Carmen. Bye for now.